Everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode, another edition of Awakening Kingdom here on YouTube. Geo here, and today we're talking the goddamned. Let's do this. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. And yeah, I've had this book for quite some time, and only until a couple days ago I thought you know what I could do another read through make a video for YouTube I haven't covered this book yet I love talking about image comics or independent comics in general it gives you sort of this freedom that's not you know you're not bogged down or constrained by capes and cowls and the big two and all that stuff here we have a very peculiar twist to stories that we've known about for ages this is sort of a biblical reinterpretation of certain characters and our protagonist is actually Cain of Cain and Abel. This story is set 1600 years after Eden and we follow the character of Cain and he's as he's wandering through a hellish landscape uh, called Earth. This is before the flood as the book kindly informs us right here book one and he's walking aimlessly not really knowing what to do what he does know is that he wants to end his life he's had uh, so many hundreds of years living through earth to this place that is filled with such barbarism and cruelty and violence and drought and you know sickness and fighting it's a very inhospitable place compared to your perception of ancient history of ancient earth if you will you see cain committed the ultimate sin of murdering his brother and the ramifications from that have corrupted the earth and you know made us as a species that much more uh, breakable and fragile than we were before and those effects in real life still bother us now to this era to this day and for the rest of humanity's existence we will always have that in the back of our head that a person can murder another individual regardless of all of that this story is written by jason aaron and drawn by adam Geta, who you may know from his work with jason aaron in dc's vertigo series scout so you are already getting some really detailed artwork, some beautiful, grungy, disgusting, uh, muddy, and, and just vile artwork, and yet it is so awesome to read. The action is intense, the landscapes just look straight out of hell. This desert, this constant desert, I mean, you can judge from the back here and the multiple panels of just how brutal this world that is ours you know you have this perception of earth and here we we have something completely different to look at and here we have some muddy brownish colors to represent most of the book it's this kind of uh, art style which uh, dominates the story but you also have some very interesting night scenes like this which really calms the reader from the hellish experience it's sort of you take a deep breath when you come to scenes like this of course it's in the dark there's no light sources so you don't really know what terror lies in the dark so it's even more frightening that these characters are roaming about like this so we're following Kane, like i mentioned earlier and he is seeking a way to end his life after so many years hundreds of years he has cursed god and he just doesn't want to continue anymore he knows what he did he's fully aware and it's not necessarily or at least at the start of the book about seeking redemption and it's more about just sort of freeing himself of this uh pain and he's looking for this ultimate opponent that will uh, kill him in combat i guess so he is on this journey and along the way he meets a couple characters which sort of maybe bring some of his humanity back he goes on this mission to save someone and through that process 
maybe finds a little bit more about himself and remembers who he was before he murdered his brother. And it's that sort of moral dilemma which, of course, Jason Aaron uh, expertly goes through and captures a very interesting reimagining and a very interesting take on a famous character and sort of his reluctant nature of not only being like could he be a hero to this story could he reform himself as a person and not end it all and and find some sort of a uh, new lease on life and uh, at some point in this book there are multiple hints at that and it's very interesting i love the I love that this story isn't necessarily about cursing and uh, being like an F you to religious stuff. N not at all. It's an alternate take for entertainment purposes, but also to sort of remind the reader that the stuff, and, and this is, uh, we're talking about murder, so you have to take it with a grain of salt here. But what I'm trying to get at is that some of the stuff that we have that we've done can be uh, redeemed at least and we can find the right path from the negativity and we can aspire to do some good even through uh, dire situations and all that stuff or at least that's what I took out of it uh, other than that the story has <laughs> a way too much violence and gore and just dirty looking uh, people just uh, living Mad Max style in the desert with freaking animals and all that stuff. So it's a very interesting, wild, crazy, bitchin' interpretation of before the flood period when it comes to uh, the Old Testament. So yeah. Also the comparison between Noah, which is radically different than what you're imagining, compared to Cain is pretty freaking interesting. I like that the book has a clear starting point and resolution and it gives you wanting more. We don't have a volume two unfortunately. It's been teased and the creative team is working on it but we don't have that yet. However, the ending of the book, it ends on a really somber, sad note with promises for even greater tales to follow. This story sort of reminded me like a freaking biblical witcher. I would love to see this comic book adapted into either a video game or a live action movie. It has a lot of potential to be explored in an alternate medium, I think at least. A very interesting story, a wonderful artwork and the scenes and the action and the panels and everything. It just is very cinematic in scope. This book is obviously rated mature, so I don't recommend it for everybody. And of course, I do know that a lot of people, uh, and I didn't even want to bring it up simply because it touches on biblical stuff. I am a, a fairly religious person and I had no problem whatsoever reading this at all and took some a lot of positives out of this and Aaron's examination of a character that is villainized and how he can rise against expectations and kind of maybe go on this redemption arc I guess so I'm hopeful I'm I'm, I'm really excited about the possibility of that second and, and maybe more third book uh, hopefully we do get to see that sometime soon uh, in the next year, perhaps. I don't know. Have you read The Goddamned? Let me know in the comment section down below. This was a strange mix of biblical stories with uh, Conan the Barbarian mixed in with Mad Max and The Witcher. It, it's, it's pretty wild. If you've read it, let me know. If not, tell me your favorite Sword and Sandals comic graphic novel. Let me know down below. I'm very interested in finding out as well. Guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. As always, hit the little bell icon here on YouTube so you know when new videos pop up. And if you want to follow me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Also, I've got a merch store. Link in the description down below. It'll help out a ton if you uh, go through that. I am working on uploading different designs and stuff, so check it out. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. I will catch all of you on our next video.